This is Duke University. Global trade and environmental Being justice. Human rights China issues today. are still. The term Ubuntu. About the Alien and Sedition Accident. He's making inferential discoveries. The importance of an archive. The John Ho Franklin Center. Lady Henrietta Vinton Davis, who Garvey dubbed the Negro Joan of Arc. She was a Shakespearean actress and orator. She was the protege of Frederick Douglass. She worked as recorder of deeds in Washington, D.C. Um, her stepfather was an affluent Methodist minister. And she comes to the organization at age 56. The average age of members of the UNIA ranged from 28 to 35. Now, here's a woman who could very easily be a club woman. She's a, a recorder of deeds. She's a former school teacher. You know, she comes with a cachet, and yet she likes the UNIA. She's a Washingtonian, but she likes this New York, Harlem guy standing on a street corner shouting at the top of his lungs. And the question for me became, OK, does she not have sense? I mean, she was grown, right? She's supposed to have it together a little bit better than this. And come to find out that what attracted Lady Davis to the organization more than anything else was the idea that Garvey was against color consciousness. And for her, this was a big deal. She felt that color consciousness was actually the ruination of the race. That of all the problems we had, you could drink, you could smoke, you could philander. Just don't be color conscious. Do it with, smoke with everybody, drink with everybody, sleep with everybody. Just don't be color conscious. And so for her, the deciding factor became this idea of how do we have racial progress? Not just racial uplift, but racial progress. How do we move everybody in a direction? Her first um, step in that direction was through an auxiliary called the Black Cross Nurses, and she became the lead organizer of the Black Cross Nurses. The Black Cross Nurses was actually an auxiliary that was established to um, assist women in the organization who were already practicing homeopathic remedies. It was one of the ways that they took credit for what they did. They created an organization that allowed them to practice lay nursing and eventually they went on to establish a nursing program in the organization with Dr. J.J. Peters at the helm and the program was an 18-month program. You could not buy a uniform until you completed the program and they actually had a graduation ceremony, an examination process that all led to becoming a certificated nurse. Now, why this becomes important is that this is being done at a time in America when nursing schools are only graduating one, if two, African-American women. The majority of African-American women, um, particularly in the South, are engaged in domestic service work or in the North in factory work. Yet and still, they know a little something about this bush or that berry. And what Henrietta Vinton Davis's Black Cross Nurses does is actually get women to combine homeopathic medicine with textbook medicine. So in places in Louisiana and Miami, um, Mobile, Alabama, in Key West, um, in Denver, Colorado, and in Los Angeles, where people would not necessarily get to see a doctor or there was none to come, they had the BCN. The second thing that's important about the BCN is that it existed, and I, for, I neglected to mention this, and it's important because it's significant to this word universal. The Universal Negro Improvement Association existed on all seven continents and throughout both the West and East Indies. Now, the reason that the BCN become even more important is that they actually become what I consider the diasporic diamond of the UNIA. Why? Because they took good notes and they helped my research. <laughs> they actually print pamphlets with instructions on how to 
use certain teas, how to treat rashes, how to cure whooping cough, what do you do if you think you have light head, which meant high blood pressure, what to do if your husband was cranky, what to do if your children weren't listening, what to do for sucking thumb. And as a result, you see a, a, a kind of amalgam of ideas from the Caribbean, from Africa, from North America, from Canada, from the South, coming together in these pamphlets. And they're actually sitting down with each other saying, OK, the name of this plant for us is this. What do you call it? Do you all have this plant? OK, well, the next time we get together, we're going to figure out how to get this plant distributed so that everybody can have access to aloe vera, something that people in the Caribbean took for granted. You know, um, and they called it single Bible because of the long leaf. They were talking to women in, in, in New York and Chicago, finding out that they weren't using it on their skin and that it was good for burns and chicken pox and so forth. And so she also is the only female in the UNIA hierarchy. She's fourth president general of, of the organization itself. She becomes the president of the Black Star Line and the Black Cross Navigation um, Trading Company. She is the only salaried woman in the organization. She was promised a salary of $6,000 a year by 1923. And to date, I think Lady Davis only collected maybe four grand for 12 years of service. So I do spend a lot of time in my research on her because I think she does deserve a lot more credit um, than what she got. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.